Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel, and welcome back to Angels with Scaly Wings. Last time we discovered, well, not not we, but the police discovered yet another body, and we found a possible hideout for Reza. And now we have all these tasks that we have to do. I'm gonna start with taking the bloody bandage we found at the crime scene back to the research facility. I hope this is the right place. I'm pretty sure it is. Okay, hello. Can I help you? Yeah, I'm just dropping this evidence off on behalf of the police. From the Reza case, right? No, I already read the memo. Yep, well, here you go. Thanks. I'll get right to it. Thanks. Okay, well, that was quick. Fine. Next, visit the witness, take the PDA to the library. Okay, let's go to the witness then. Who is that? Do we know them? No, we don't. Can I help you? You must be Ipsum, is that right? Like, like at Lorem Ipsum. Wait! There is a Lorem as well! It's the little blue guy. Yes. I am working with the police and hoped you could answer a few questions. Oh, do you have any news about my roommate? Is this about the noises you heard last night? What is going on with your roommate? He went missing a few days ago. I already talked to someone from the police about this, but I haven't heard back from them since. I'm sorry, this is the first I've heard about this. I don't know what happened to him. He didn't go on a vacation, nor did he suddenly decide to visit the next town. I'd know if he did. He would have told me. Honestly, I find it odd that when someone goes missing, I don't hear back from several days. But when I heard a loud bang noises during the night, the police sent someone over immediately. Oh my god, don't tell me Lorem is dead. I'm sorry, but I don't think I want to talk about this right now. Well, crap. Okay. Thanks for all your help. Now that the facility has received the bandage, maybe we'll discover something new. I'll take care of the remaining tasks so you can take the rest of the day off. I'm sure you have things to do other than helping the police department. Well, no, not really. It's not a problem. My trip to your world wasn't supposed to be a vacation. Alright then, I'll see you next time. Yeah, see ya. Bye. What am I supposed to do now? After this fateful day, I was glad to finally have some sort of respite. I wandered into the kitchen as I considered tonight's dinner. Should I cook something or order out? When I returned to the living room, I suddenly found my strength leaving me and collapsed to the floor. What? The next thing I saw was a blurry stone ceiling. As my eyesight slowly returned, I managed to sit up. I was in a cave, and before me stood a familiar, mysterious face. Oh, it's the... this one. I apologize for the violence, but I can assure you it is the easiest way. It was the easiest way. Are you Reza? Or somebody else? Where am I? Is this your hideout? Just a temporary accommodation so we can be undisturbed for this meeting. Someone else used to live here until recently. Do you know who I am? Well, you're not Reza. Good. What did it take for you to figure that out? Since you're not whispering anymore, I can hear it clearly in your voice. I had a feeling that you couldn't be him since the first time we met, though. Which time are you talking about? The generator in the cellar when you pushed me. I see. You can call me the administrator. No other humans are supposed to be here, though. I assume that's why you're wearing the mask. You don't want to be recognized. Also, they might not be human. After all, there are... Oh, wait, have we seen human hands on them? I'm not sure, I'm not sure. That is correct. Whoever you are, you also saved my life. On more than one occasion. Your presence here doesn't make any sense. You couldn't have come through the portal, the dragons would have noticed. And this is where you are wrong. My arrival through the portal is what led the dragons to discover it in the first place. Is that so? 
When I crawled out from the hole in the earth that hit the portal, there were no guards to discover me. My appearance exposed the portal, but the dragons didn't know it was there yet. So we arrived even before Reza. That's make you the actual first human to come to this world. And that is more true than you might think. Just who are you then? I may have arrived through the portal like you, but my story is very different. Will you tell me your story then? Before the fall of humanity, I was an engineer. I was part of a team that was formed to create bioweapons. Our task was to create those bioweapons in a country where their development hadn't yet been regulated or outlawed. These weapons were planned to be a low-cost alternative for poor countries to wage war, so they would no longer have to rely on expensive drones and machines for warfare. I don't like this story. I was to set up the lab where the bioweapon development would take place. It was a... Candlestein, clandestine operation set to be in the middle of the wilderness. The laboratory was an independent research and living unit and provided everything we needed without having to rely on external resources or even existing power grid. Uh -huh. Everything was to be teleported right into the middle of nowhere with no traces or paper trail to follow, so international communities and law enforcement would have no idea of our operations. Our only connection to the outside world after setup would have been a two-way portal to our headquarters, who would provide anything, everything we needed. While we already could teleport individual people, teleporting a whole building was another matter entirely. Our solution was matter compression technology, incredibly expensive but operating in the grey market was also very lucrative. The technology behind it was much more complicated than even teleportation, despite being based on it. While teleportation works by utilizing black holes with the beginning and end, compression technology relies on a loop, keeping matter in sort of limbo state until the loop is broken. Working with black holes was very complicated to begin with, but this shape required much more finesse and thus was much more expensive. I was to be sent alone to set up the lab and the portal so that the rest of the team could arrive safely. In case you didn't know, it is possible to use portal to send someone to a previously defined endpoint. Therefore, it is not required to have a portal at the destination to be sent there, but as you can imagine, this is also very dangerous. A single variable off by a fraction could mean the difference between landing safely at your destination and smothering in space. So, of course, my employer did not want anything like that to happen. Now, not necessarily for my own sake, but because of all the unfathomably expensive equipment I had with me. Regardless, something went wrong anyway. Despite all their checks and safeguards, they could only minimize the risk so much. Even if the risk is a fraction of a fraction, sometimes you are just that unlucky. And sometimes it turns out that your bad luck is a blessing in disguise. I arrived safely somewhere in the jungles of Earth, yet it was not the destination that had been planned. I knew something was off, but nevertheless, I set to work immediately. At the very least, I could prepare the building. I would have shelter, and then I would begin preparation of our project. Getting the portal into working order would take more time, as it was a complicated process that could take several weeks. If things had gone wrong, as I suspected, I would be at least able to establish contact with headquarters after the portal had been set up, and I would be able to return. While teleporting the lab to the wrong location was certainly a costly mistake, I was still lucky to have my life. Before long, I discovered the truth about the place I had arrived. While I was still on Earth, it was not the Earth I knew. It was the Earth of 65 billion years ago. Uh-huh. We knew that utilizing black hole for tele holes for teleportation tri travel was a theoretical possibility. If something even my company didn't dare to attempt though, as teleportation in itself was still a very new technology. Yet here I was, 65 million years in the past, with the research station all to myself. The company would revel in the opportunity to study and profit from all the different life forms I could see. If only they knew about them. I spent a few weeks setting up the portal as planned, yet when I tried to re-establish contact with my employer, I was met with silence. Despite the time discrepancy, the portal should have been able to find my companies in the present. For a black hole, sending something through time is no different than sending something through space. 
However, when we built the portals, we gave them a specialized configuration. It was only possible to travel through space by alien aligning them across the time axis. That meant that I, in the past, would still be able to search for portals in the present to connect to it. My counterparts in the present, though, would not be able to find me in the past even if they tried. But I couldn't find them. Not a single one. Even after checking the portal for its function, I determined that, for all intents and purposes, the portals from the company should have been there to connect with. It was then that I had a terrible realization. The portals in the present didn't exist anymore, or were no longer operational. Maybe the blunder of teleporting the lab caused them to reconsider the risk of using this technology. After all, it was already controversial and had been outlawed in several countries. Hmm. I wouldn't have been surprised if they decided to cut their losses, but it was highly unlikely that they would have immediately shut down every single portal and left me stranded without notice. Portal technology was still being relied on in several places in the present. In my mind, only one possibility remained, super weapons. Various nations had been using them as bargaining chips for some time. I didn't think the threats had become that serious, but one of them must have launched their weapon and destroyed the majority of Earth. It could have been a result of malfunction or perhaps the political situation had escalated. Either way, it was not possible for me to establish any means of communication to find out what had really happened. I could have sent myself back into the present with the right coordinates, but this was a risky endeavor. I also had to ris ask myself if it was a present I wanted to return to. I was sure that if anything was even left of our world, the aftermath of a possible ret retaliatory... Retaliatory strike would take care of the rest. In the end, I had to realize that whichever present did exist was likely not the one that was worth returning to. It made my decision all the easier. Instead of returning to a destroyed civilization, I saw an opportunity. Rather than creating bioweapons, I could use the lab to create a new civilization shaped by my own ideals. I had all the necessary data and the most modern methods and machines at my fingertips. Besides, most of the process had already been automated. In the end, I still used the lab for what it had been created for. Fusing human and animal DNA to create beings that were mostly animal but possessed a greater intelligence that allowed them to learn whatever we wanted them to. As I didn't have any animal samples sent, with me when I initially arrived, I collected them from the sources available to me. Automated processes mixed the DNA further across the samples. New abilities were added like enhanced armor, flights, split weapons to make the new creatures more effective in combat. The result was a number of different species, each tailored and optimized to fill a specific role in a war situation. Hormones allowed me to speed up their growth and with the lab's learning program they could be educated in whatever manner I saw fit. My first concern was self-sufficiency. They needed the kind of knowledge that would enable them to come together as their own independent society. Luckily, the AI had automated all the processes in the lab was more than helpful. I unleashed the first generation of my creation and as their leader founded our first village. I thought we could really pull it off. And once I saw that they could survive without my guidance and also govern themselves, I knew my plan was a success. Mm hmm. When I realized that this new society would eventually be destroyed, I told myself that I would do anything I could to save it. Destroyed? What are you talking about? Now, do you realize where we are? The Chicks Glop. There, the leap that asteroid is headed for us. With a diameter of over 10 kilometers, its impact will create humongous clouds of dust, throwing Earth into a little or literal dark age. They will block out the sunlight for over a year, killing off many species of plants that rely on photosynthesis to survive. As a result, animals that eat those plants will also vanish, as will those who sought sustenance from those these herbivores. All in all, 75% of all species will vanish, and in terrestrial ecosystems, all animals heavier than a single kilogram will die. That would be 2.2 pounds, in case you didn't know. 
It will be the end of everyone who lives here. Every single dragon you have seen, unless we do something. We? What am I supposed to do? Do you not wish to save them? I came here to help humanity. Now you tell me that this society, this whole world, is also on the brink of extinction? That is the truth. What kind of difference could a single person like me even make to save it? Right now, it's also a single person that presents its greatest threat. Reza, how? In order to stop the comet, we will need as much power as possible. We reclaimed all the generators he stole. Besides, how could a few of them be enough to make a difference for something like this? Don't forget that Reza is still out there, looking for more. The truth is, I don't know if all the generators we could gather would even be enough. We only require enough power to divert the comet's path during a crucial moment, but even if this plan is possible, we will need every single generator we can get. So my goal hasn't changed. We just need to find Reza. Yes, but you'll need my help, and maybe the help of others. You know that Reza is dangerous, and with his gun he has a clear advantage. Don't think that he wouldn't hesitate to kill you if you were in his, in his way. Then what shall I do? Do you know where he is? No, but I think you'll find him soon, and you can count on my support when that happens. I see. There's only one thing that still doesn't make sense to me, though. The dragons have myths about you, but they don't know or remember you. They haven't seen any humans for who knows how long. How much time could have passed since you created them and now? How many generations could it take to forget? Why isn't there proof of your existence? I don't know exactly how long it's been myself, when I realized what time period I was in and that my creation was about to be wiped out in the future, I wanted to go to that future and see what they had become. I disabled the portal's time access safeguards and thus enabled it to connect with the others in different times. This also included that very same portal in the future. With the generator of our lab being able to supply the portal with power for an indefinite amount of time, I was able to travel to any point in the future I wanted to. The entry and end point of the black hole would be the same place and the same portal, with the way traveled being just along the time axis. Since I could now search for connection points in any time period, I could look for my own portal in the future and pinpoint the moment its signal stopped. The comet. Exactly. I found that specific point in time and and traveled to a future that was as close to that event as I could safely manage. After I arrived here, my escape from the portal's hiding place led to its discovery by the dragons, and the laboratory were unearthed. unearthed. I still don't understand how our portal found yours, or why we ended up arriving at this particular time period. The portal you found was no doubt one of my companies. They must have been connected before, so the corresponding data for their connection already existed when you found it. I'm not sure if that could bypass the anti-time travel safeguards, though. It was uh, completely operational when you found it. No, it took a little bit of tinkering. Probably jumping the hardware safeguards in the progress. Now, consider that connected portals travel along the time axis together. The data for them, their beginning and end points are adjusted automatically. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to transport anything from one place to the world, one place in the world to another without also sending it through time. Since these portals must have been connected at some point, the corresponding data for the connection between those two portals already existed. When using the same connection without changing any of the data, this would mean that despite the time discrepancy between those two portals, time still progressed linearly for them. I'm not sure I understand. Yeah. Let me try to rephrase that. The portal you found and my own share a connection. However, while the connection is locked to a certain place, which is wherever the portal is at that very moment, it is not connected to a specific point in time. For us and the physical machines that are the portals, time passes linearly, and we can't do anything about that. However, for the black holes, this isn't the case. Just as their entry and end points can be in different places, they can also be in different times. In order to not send something through the time when we just want to transport something from one portal to another, the portals are anchored together in such a way that the time data is automatically synchronized. Essentially, this means that 
ever since you arrived in this world, the same amount of time that has passed for you has also passed in the place where you came from. I see. So despite being in different time periods, time still passes linearly on both sides of the portals. Otherwise, it would not have been possible for you to send messages back and forth to each other. If they were not synchronized, the portals on both sides would stay connected not only to a single point in space, but also to a single point in time, thus making proper two-way communication impossible. However, this is only possible through the connection that has already been forged. If we wanted to, we could also use our portal to send you back to your own time period, but to a moment before Reza even arrived here. But that would mean there would be two of me, right? Wouldn't that cause a time paradox? I can only tell you that it would work. No one has studied time travel before though, so if there are any consequences then I'm not sure of them. Most likely an entirely new timeline would be created. There would be a timeline without Greta altogether and the one and the new one there would be two of you. This is becoming way too complicated. I apologize. To come back to your original question, I'm not sure how much time passed between the time I left my newborn society and now. Since the portal was not designed for time travel, I have no way of knowing how the variables, vari variables translated to our perception time, perception of time. It could have been thousands or even millions of years. How could the portal or even its power source still be operational after all this time? The portal receives its power from the generator in the lab. Its units were fitted with the absolute best technology we had to offer. It was designed to provide sustainable power completely independently from any already existing network or power lines. It gained energy from many sources, sun rays, earth's heat and movement, just to name a few. Keep in mind that it had to power a whole laboratory and research station while also providing the energy required for all of its inhabitants and associated energy expenditures. Taking its power from Earth itself, uh, itself, a generator like this could continue providing power to the lab indefinitely. Speaking of which, why haven't I seen a single dinosaur since I arrived? It sees that the Dragon Society expanded over the whole continent. Many still hunt on their own for sustenance, and as such, the original species they were based on have mostly vanished, as in direct competition. Ours proved to be far superior. Also, they have probably taken measures against having big predators roam their cities and villages. Yet, while the dragon population has increased tremendously, I have found that by and large their society as a whole has not changed much. Is that why everything here looks like it was made for humans? I suppose so. The learning program I initially used gave them knowledge about things and how to create them, yet of course these were only human inventions and designs. Did they never once stop to think that they should adjust how certain things look? A lot of the furniture and objects I've seen look very impractical for a dragon. And I was surprised at it too, but I have an explanation for this phenomenon. Don't forget that their genome was designed by an AI program to make them into effective bioweapons. The idea was to have them indoctrinated at young age. After researching, after certain... <coughs> After reaching adolescence, their learning capacity would be greatly diminished. This resulted in subjects that would stay loyal and be unlikely to change their desired behaviors. Instincts also play a role. I imagine they are very much at odds with their learned behavior. Instincts in animals never change, and instinctual behaviors will always be there. If a given trait has been programmed into their genome as an instinct, it is not very likely to change even through numerous generations. We can see the results of this here. While I initially made them learn a certain set of values and knowledge, I have found that the expression of those ideas has hardly changed. And after I was gone, each new generation learned, learned from its elders, and much of the initial knowledge and information was retained through all this time. Their genome as a whole did change, however, which was unavoidable over time. If they had if they had been used as bioweapons as intended, they would have been nothing more than an army of identical clones. 
While I can see subtle changes in behaviors as a result, some traits are still very much present in them. They are content with what they have and don't strive for more. They don't innovate or change. So technological breakthroughs or new inventions are a rarity. It's quite the opposite, really. They very much value tradition and their ways which have not changed much in all these years. I see. How much time do we even have left to stop the comet? In a few weeks the comet will pass the moon and its gravity field will point the comet's trajectory towards Earth. This is when we will need to be ready. If we strike then, we only need to minimally affect its path in order for the comet to pass Earth safely. It won't be enough time for the inhabitants of this world to prepare if Reza steals our greatest assets. So it's all about Reza and the generators, isn't it? Indeed. By the way, I fixed the portal in case we need to use it. Did you break it to prevent me from being sent away? No, that wasn't me. Reza better not use it to escape. Trust me, the portal is our greatest asset. I have programmed it with emergency coordinates. If you should find yourself in a helpless situation and feel there is no other way out, go to the portal. I have made sure only you will be able to use them. I'll keep that in mind. So what's your plan? What do we do now? I will resume my work and you will continue yours. Find Reza. The administrator turned to leave. Wait, what's with all the secrecy? Why are you still wearing that mask? Why don't we pool our resources together and you show me your hideout? Don't you think it would be better if you were completely frank with me? No, not now. Is the administrator another timeline version of me? I wouldn't be surprised. A second later, the figure had already vanished into the darkness outside. When I followed, I realized that I wasn't sure how to get back to my apartment. Surrounded by trees and the blanket of night, it was hard to make out where I stood. After wandering through the underbrush, I realized that lights on the horizon had to be coming from the village and made my way back. Huh. I returned to my apartment without much trouble. When I looked at the clock, I was surprised to see how much time had passed. Not having anything left to do for the day, I soon fell into a deep slumber. Well, that was an info dump. Tim, there's nothing to do for me nothing for me to do this morning. I guess they don't need me at the police department. Not that I mind. Seems I've got some messages. Let's see. Hey, Retta. You wanna meet up and go somewhere? Just the two of us. I just want to get out of my crummy temporary apartment. I'm sure we could think of something fun. Is he thinking what I'm thinking? Um, okay. So apparently Adin is not dead. No, I, I want to make sure if Adin is alive or not. This should be the right address. I'm coming! Okay, so it was. She was alive. Oh, it's you. I was expecting someone else. You're a little early. Yeah, I didn't know how long it would take me to get her. Better early than late, right? No, I'm glad they decided not to send you away after all. Me too. Okay. Hi, who are you? You look cute. And who might that be? This is Emily. She's one of the kids I work with. Hello, Emily. Say hi, Emily. Hi. I just have to bring her back to the or orphanage real quick. Feel free to make yourself at home in, in the meantime, okay? Sure. But weren't you expecting someone? I met Emily. Lovely. Okay. Hi. So this is where you live, Adin. Small but cozy. I'm back! That was quick. Being able to fly does have its perks, you know? Wait, you flew her back? Well, I am a delivery flyer. She doesn't get scared or anything. Not at all. She's such a brave little girl. So what is exactly is that you do at the orphanage? I'm a volunteer. I help them out with whatever they need and sometimes they carry the kids. I thought we went through this already. They only have so many social workers. The ratio is about one social worker for every 10 children, so it's good for the kids to spend some time one-on-one -on -one with someone they know. 
I guess you could almost call it babysitting, but for the kids, we basically become foster parents. The older they get, the less likely they are to be adopted. She might be too old to be considered soon. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, I know. I'm worried about what will happen to her if she doesn't find a family. We will still take care of her, of course, but it's not quite the same as having parents. I'd adopt her myself, but I don't think I could care for her properly. Not as a single parent with my package packed work schedule. I still volunteer as often as I can, because if I don't, who will? Someone needs to be there for those kids. No, it's very nice of you. Thanks, but for me, it's not about being nice. I almost feel obligated to help, you know? Anyway, let's talk about something less depressing. Like what? Let me think. Oh, I just remembered that someone died here recently. Here? In your apartment? No, not here, silly. It was close, though. Barely a block from here. Right, the murder of the maintenance guy. I remember that. Wait, it was murder? I didn't know that. I thought it was an accident or something. That's terrible. Sorry for mentioning it. Finding the first victim is already bad enough for me, but now I have to hear there was another murder in town? I wish I could get some good news for once. At least it wasn't you who was murdered. I kind of want to say that because for a moment there, I was, I was worried it would be her. Mm, that's a strange way of looking at it, but you have a point. That reminds me, I've got something I wanted to try on you. Try on me? It's nothing too dramatic. I read this magazine the other day and found a new interesting articles. Using her partial hands, she held up a magazine to show me its cover. A rather bold-looking female was presented on the front, adorned with trinkets like rings and jewels. Various headlines gave me an idea of the content within. It reminded me a lot of a typical gossip magazines back home. Lifestyle, the magazine for modern people. This issue even came with a set of fortune cards. Not sure what to expect, those types of magazines are usually trash. I'm sure they're qualified to determine my fate. Yes, absolutely. With articles like 5 steps to get the partner of your dreams, I'm sure they're qualified to determine my fate. Come on, it'll be fun. No, well, if you say so. What should we look at first? Uh, you decide. Alright, let's see. Here, this article talks about dreams and what they mean. Have you had any strange or recurring dreams lately? Um, no, not often about people I know. That could be for a variety of reasons. One theory is that dreams are a way for the brain to process the day-to-day -day experiences, so it's not unusual to dream of people you've met. But a recurring dream involving the same people is a different story. That could represent a strong emotion for the un or unresolved issues with that person. What about your dreams? Kind of feels like they're different every night. Most of them are nonsense, but sometimes I dream of people I used to know. What do you make of all this? I don't know. I don't know. Even the article concludes that scientists haven't figured out exactly why we dream. It's a big mystery. Alright, let's move on. No, oh, I thought you meant moving on from the magazine. Oh, don't be such a sourpuss. There's some interesting stuff in here. A reserve judgment on that. It's probably for the best. What's next? A personality test. Didn't you always want to know what kind of relationship would suit you? I already know what I want in a relationship. Uh, well, I, I do. Okay, fine. Let's take a test. Let's find out. Okay, first question. In a relationship, what role do you take? Is this a real relationship or personality test? I prefer to take the reins, my partner should be the leader, I like to switch up every once in a while. This is the closest one. Variety is the spice of life, right? Moving on to the next question. Wait, aren't you going to answer the questions too? I'll take the test after you. I don't want to keep track of both of us, our scores at one time. Alright, question number two. 
What is your favorite dessert? Chocolate cream cake, lemon ice cream with sprinkles, chocolate souffle, red hot chili cookies. Ooh, what does this question have to do with relationship? I don't know, but from these, I would go for ice cream or chili cookies. These actually look very interesting, but I'm gonna go with ice cream. Looks unusual, but sounds really interesting. I'd love to try some. Here's the next question. What is your dream job? Farmer, business person, stay at home parent, none of these, business person. I don't understand the appeal of that kind of job. It certainly doesn't mesh well with my ideals. How many more questions are there? That's all of them. Now, to look up the results. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm oh. It says that the results are outlined in the weight loss booklet that came with the magazine. But I already threw that away. Oh, what you do? I guess we will never find out. Yeah, how else would you know? There is no other way. I'll be at loss for the rest of my life. But now we get to the best part, the fortune cards. You know that stuff not real, right? Uh, do we really have to? I just wanted to try it out for fun. You need to be more open-minded. Okay, sorry. How is that supposed to work anyway? I mean, there's just cards. How can they predict the future? Well, they don't. Apparently, there are different schools of thought regarding the use of fortune-telling cards. The cards themselves don't know anything, they're just a tool. So, the information actually comes from somewhere else. But where, though? Well, one interpretation is that it's our own subconscious who gives us the answers that we seek. Similar to how dreams can be interpreted, the interpretation of the cards is very dependent on the person itself and symbols they recognize in the cards' images. We recognize images that are relevant to our lives, and that gives us the idea about ourselves and our current problems. However, that is just the most grounded interpretation out there. People usually associate something more paranormal with fortune cards. One of those explanations is that cards are our way to communicate with a higher being, a paranormal entity that shows that knows more than we do and can give us subtle nudges using the cards. And who would that be? The explanations range from ghosts to angelic beings or even involved humans. One even involved humans, really? Yeah, people would say you would communicate with humans this way. And then there was also something they called higher self. Higher self? How come you know so much about this? Because I read the article about it. Oh. Okay, what should I draw you for? Why don't I get to be the one who's reading the fortune? Because I paid for this magazine, so the cards are mine. Okay, so what are my options? I could read your past, present or future. What is it going to be? Now let's go with the furniture. The prediction of the future is what most people associate with these readings. However, the purpose is to prepare the person in question for the fu possible future rather than just predicting it. Okay, what do we get? Oh my! What is it? The card we've drawn is associated with drastic measures, particularly those with final conclusion. This can be inter interpreted in many ways, but it can refer to death, the ultimate conclusion. It can also mean many other things, like violent outcome of a brewing conflict, or a positive re resolution of a long-running conflict. It is very hard to talk with this voice. What do you think? Um, I wonder if I should be worried. I am just gonna go with this. I'm not gonna tell her that the world is coming to an end. If anything, it's not supposed to make you worry, but give you some input so you can prepare for what is to come. And what would that be? I suppose you'll find out when it comes. I guess that's everything in the magazine has to offer. Well, that certainly was interesting. I guess that means you had fun then. Sure, let's call it that. So, do you have anything interesting going on at the moment? I can't imagine what Ambassador life is like. It's been busy. I thought this whole thing would go by quickly and without any mishaps, but now it seems like there's always something happening. Oh, really? Yeah, I figured I'd come here, do the exchange and leave again, but apparently it's not that easy. 
It never is. You speak like you've had experience as an ambassador. Well, no, but doing deliveries is similar. People order something, I fly to them, we exchange a product for payment and then I go back. It's basically the same thing. Yeah, sure. But things always go wrong. For example, imagine you have two deliveries to make and the first one goes smoothly, okay? Nah, I'm imagining it very hard right now. Alright, so you get to the destination of the second delivery and they actually check what you're handing them. It turns out that you mixed up the orders but you already delivered the first one. Well, that's certainly not a pleasant situation to be in. Now you have to go back to the first family you delivered to, who by now have probably noticed that they got the wrong delivery and exchanged what you gave them for what they actually ordered. Right. But it turns out that they didn't mind the mix-up. As a matter of fact, they have already started eating what they got instead. It's not so bad that they aren't angry, but now you can't exchange the orders anymore, so you have to fly back to the restaurant and get the second order remade, remade. Happens all the time. As a result, the people waiting for the second order do get angry because their order has to be remade and delivered all over again. And the plot thickens. They complain and of course get their meal comped. And the restaurant can no longer sell the first order you still have, so the orders for both families are deducted from your paycheck and you end up eating nothing but ramen all week again, So, just so you can make the rent this month. Well, that's unfortunate. And that's why you always double check your orders, because even a small mistake can have consequences reaching further than you'd think. Sometimes we just have to learn the hard way. I guess so. Anyway, what else have you been up to recently? Do you remember the stunt flying competition I told you about? Of course. I assume your participation is a given by now. Actually, I'm not sure about that. I mailed the application earlier today, so hopefully it will arrive before the headline. Or maybe I should just fly it over myself while showing off a few moves, that is. You should fly over anyway to make sure you get in. It would be a shame if you couldn't enter because of a technicality. Yeah, I really should drop by. By the way, could you do me a favor? Well, that depends on the favor, I suppose. It's a kind of a long story, but there's something I need. You know some people at the police station, right? Yes. I think they're in the possession of a map related to an underground building they found. Yes, I've heard about that. Oh, that's great! Maybe you can get them to hand it over. Doesn't even have to be the real thing. A copy would just be just fine. What do you even need it for? Let's just say that I'm interested in doing a little investigation of the place myself. What's so special about it? It's supposed to be a remnant of an earlier civilization or maybe even something created by humans. Who wouldn't be interested in that? What? Actual human in front of you is not enough. I can think of a few people. I'd pay a visit myself if I could. Let's go with this one. If I had you all to myself, it might be enough. But since your stay is only temporary, I'll need some other human-related things to keep me busy. How do I even ask for something like that? You could always say that humanity is interested in it. Honestly, they probably would be. Could you ask them for me, please? Well, I can try. I'll think about it. I'll have to think about it. No promises. Thank you. I didn't know you were into archaeology. I wouldn't care as much if I turned out to be just some old building. The whole thing about it being made by humans is what's really interesting. What's that? Well, the myths wouldn't be very mythical anymore if that was the case. We'd have proof. And that's so shortly after finding out that humans are, in fact, real. Yes! What a time to be alive! So you believe in all that stuff? Believe isn't the right word when you're standing right in front of me, you know? That alone is a miracle. I get excited all over again just thinking about it. Speaking of which, all this excitement has made me lose the track of time. Lose the track of time. Isn't that late already? Oh, actually, I have places to be, especially if I want to make sure my contest application arrives on time. I guess I should be going then, huh? For now, at least. I 
certainly wouldn't mind if you stopped by again sometime. Will there be any magazines involved? Actually, that magazine doesn't come out that often, so we wouldn't have anything new from them. I could get a different one if you wanted to, though. Don't bother. <laughs> if you say so. Anyway, I really have to go, so I'll see you around. Bye. Okay. That was that. Another free day. Yay, me. Okay. Let's go on a date with Bryce. I wonder how many dates we have to have with a person before something really juicy happens. Oh, that must be him. Hey, Retta. Hi, Bruce. <laughs> Bryce, sorry. <laughs> I know you said you wanted to get out of this small apartment of yours, but I'm not sure if mine is much different. Well, I figured yours couldn't be any worse than mine. And now that I'm seeing it from the inside, I have to say the council didn't do a bad job with it at all. I assume it's appropriate for someone with my status. I am titled, of course. Whereas the chief of police has to make do with whatever he can get. Yeah, sorry. You said it was only temporary. It is, but I'm getting sick of it, to be honest. I can imagine. Anyway, what's the plan? Plan? I don't have a plan. We gotta do something, right? If you want some entertainment, I could offer you a bookshelf full of it. Here, Sheridan and the Sepra Scepter of Serenity thing should be enough to last you a while. No, thanks. I have enough fiber in my diet already. No, I suppose you're not a fan of reading, then. Why would I visit you to just to read some crummy book? And besides, I do read from time to time. What do you read? Signs, menus, magazines. I don't think that counts. Of course it counts. Let me take a look around your apartment, then. Feel free, but I'm not sure if there's anything special about it. I watched with amusement as Bryce headed for the kitchen. So that's what you're really looking for. Guess what? I found something. He showed me one of the cheap bottles of wine that had been in the cupboard since I arrived. Why don't you rate the fridge while you're at it? No thanks, this will do for now. Oh, I get it. You want to play spin the bottle? Sure, we just gotta empty it first. I assume you don't mean emptying it into the sink. Of course not. That would be a terrible waste. A terrible waste of the second cheapest wine from the store. I don't know how you humans are with stuff like that, but here we don't throw away perfectly good things. I'm not sure if this wine would qualify as perfectly good. Hey, at least it's not the absolute bottom of the barrel. Now, are you going to help me with this or not? Mm, okay, sure. Sure, let's be nice. Alright, let's make it one glass for you and the rest for me. I think that's fair. If I had to guess, I'd say I'd weigh five to ten times as much as you do. So, this is as fair as it gets. Well, if you say so. I opened the kitchen cabinet to find an appropriate vessel for Bryce when I turned to ask him about it. He had already opened the bottle and was suckling on it like a baby. Well, I suppose that means I won't have to do any dishes. How does it taste? Like wine, I suppose. Cheap wine. Besides, I thought you were more of a beer person. Hey, I'll take what I can get. Just a few minutes later, the bottle had been emptied completely. I'm not sure if drinking like a dragon is a phrase, but if it isn't, it should be. Hey, not everyone can drink like me. I see. And now we can finally play spit the bottle. Do we need more people for that? Damn, you're right. Now I drank all of this for nothing. Somehow I think the spin the bottle thing was just an excuse so you could drink the wine. What? I would never do such a thing. Of course not. Well, we could still play it with just the two of us. At uh, that point, we wouldn't even need the bottle anymore. Come on, where's your sense of funness? 
Is that even a word? <laughs> I was just going to ask that. We're here to relax. You should lighten up a bit. It's a bit hard to lighten up given everything that's been happening here. If anything, it's worse now than it's ever been. Reza's actions are threatening our agreement and with the, it's the survival of everyone I know back home. But we're, what really takes the cake is that he may have it out for me because I'm helping all of you. You want to have this conversation right now? Alright, let's have it. Just let it all out. Yeah, what did we talk about Maverick? He may have it out for me because he thinks I'm working with Reza. And me? I'm just here, right in the middle of this whole mess, just trying to make the best of it. You know, you're only involved in the investigation because we needed your help, right? I know, and I'm doing what I can, but that doesn't mean it's making my situation any easier. You think I don't know that? Me? The one responsible for every action our police is taking in this matter? If you want to go ahead and blame someone, just blame me. I can take it. I'm not blaming you. I'm just saying this whole situation is something I'm not very comfortable with. And whose responsibility is that, huh? However you look at it, it's me. I was the one who didn't listen to Maverick back when he had his suspicions about Reza. If we had acted then, this whole thing might not have spiraled out of control like it did. And despite what you might think about him, he was the one who found Reza's hideout, even after I forced him to s into sick leave. We were practically at Reza's front door and he still got away somehow. If I hadn't done something differently, we might have caught him. If I had done something different, we might have caught him. Let this be my official apology to you. I apologize for anything I might have done to wrong you. I'm sorry for putting you through all of this and having to involve you in our work while trying to fix this whole mess, because in the end, this is all my responsibility. You don't need to apologize for anything. Whoa! Don't get all violent on me, mister! He hurled the empty, bo empty bottle against the wall on the other side of the room where it's shattered into pieces. Then what do you want me to do, huh? You're scaring me! I don't know. Do you think it's easy for me, seeing so many people die on my watch? Do you think I don't keep asking myself the same questions, what I could have done differently and if that would have made a difference? You'd think as chief I'd be used to it by now, but I'm not. How could someone ever get used to this? It's my duty, you know. But I can't save them all. I never could. You know what happened out on patrol today? We found a dead child and her mother in their home in the outskirts of town. The mother died of some sort of illness, and after that, the daughter never left her side again, as if she had just given up on life. You try and think how you might explain something like that to the relatives, but... Guess in this case, we got lucky because the father was one of Reza's earliest victims. You've been to more than enough crime scenes by now. How have you remained so calm? Do all those who have died not matter to you? I'm sorry for making you look at a corpse on your very first day here, but you know I had to. Your help here has been invaluable, and it's not like I could ask anyone else. It's the same for me, really. Sure, they could ask someone else to be chief, but if I'm the one who's best suited for this job, who am I to reject that? Otherwise, I'd have to blame myself for every mistake the other chief made. Is that why you drink? It might come as a surprise, but... Actually, the alcoholic police chief used to be a huge stereotype in our world. Really? You wouldn't believe it. Actually, I do. The research about alcoholism in the police force is out there, but the general populace doesn't know about it. It's all just internal documents. Why don't people know? They don't want to know about unhappy things like that. Besides, they trust their chief. If they knew about it, maybe they'd start to have their doubts. I thought it was common knowledge that you visit the bar fairly often. Often enough that you're friends with the bartender. I don't know. Maybe they don't realize how it affects me. They see someone who can drink a lot and does it for fun. They don't realize what it means. What other stereotypes about the police are there in your world? Well, that's the biggest one. I see. Well, alcoholism and suicide are both huge problems in law enforcement. Suicide? 
Yeah, if you have to deal with the things we do on a daily basis, it can affect you in a pretty bad ways. Everyone has their breaking points. We all just cope on our own different ways. Some do it better than others. That's why I'm worried about Maverick right now, and why I wish you'd known him as long as I have. You think he's at his breaking point? He's taking this whole Reza situation very personally. I'm just worried about him, you know. Just like I'm worried about everything else until we can sort this whole th mess. It's personal for me too. No matter what you may think about Maverick or what he may think of you, he still found Reza's hideout which led to us which led us to the generators. I guess you have both helped a lot in this investigation. My point with all of this is, we're all a very tight-knit group at the police station. Me, Sebastian, Maverick, Naomi, the bond we form on the job is how we know to look out for each other. I can tell you there's nothing else quite like it. What do you think? How many more have to die to stop Reza? If anything, he's more dangerous now than he's been ever before. You know how much depends on how this all turns out. Whatever happens, I'm just glad to have known you. Remember when I told you about the wooden models I'm making? I never told anyone else that. As much as I like everyone at the department, it's not just something that I can talk about with them. You saw us at the BBQ. I'd never hear the end of it. Sorry about the bottle, by the way. I'll clean it up, but don't worry about it. It was empty anyway. <laughs> That's the red that I like. Oh, you won't believe what happened with Emira at work. Well, what did? I hated your advice and told her the truth. Details, Bryce? Tell me everything? Well, the day before yesterday, he tried her thing again. Clump complained about her back pain to get a massage and asked me if I didn't have if I didn't want to settle down eventually. At some point I had enough and just told her outright that I'm not interested in her. For your own sake, I hope you weren't too harsh. Hey, you said I should tell her the truth, so I did. What did you say? Just that I noticed her clear attempts at wooing me and that I'm not interested. That's all. And how did she react? Not much. She just looked at me and said, Oh. I see. That's all? Yeah. And then she stopped with the comments after that. Oh, guess that's not so bad then. Well, not really. Now she's having me do all kinds of stupid things like guard the outside of their office door for hours on end. Maybe she's still worried about Reza. The building has its own security, so it's pretty clear that she just doing it to get back at me for rejecting her. She's really good at hiding it though. I'd never be able to prove it. You won't have to be with her for much longer. Yeah, but I guess she'll just keep wasting my time until it's over. Well, at least you tried to do the right thing. Yeah. Can I ask you something? Go ahead. If I told you that I'm a time traveler from the future, what would you say? Time traveler? Isn't that something that just happens in bad science fiction novels? Why only bad science fiction novels in particular? Don't you think there could be a good one? Let's just say all science fiction novels, because they're all bad. No, they're not. Huge generalization aside, what if we are in a science fiction story and time travelers are real? No, I'd want to see some proof of it first. That's not something you come across every day, after all. Well, what if I confide it to you as a friend? You'd still have to show me some proof or else I'd call you out on the joke. What if I was serious? Well, that's pretty far out. That's the kind of thing someone would make up to scam people for their money or something like that. Alright, let's forget about the time travelers. What if I told you there is another human here besides Reza and me? This is getting kind of weird, right? Them. Just entertain me for this question. Well, unless you had some sort of proof, I'd call you crazy. As a member of law enforcement, aren't you supposed to follow up on every report? Yes, but that doesn't that doesn't mean we have to believe everything. If there is no proof, we'll look for proof. If you don't find some, well, without any proof or leads to follow, there's nothing we can do anyway. I see. By the way, 
When you and Sebastian went to the farmhouse to go after Reza, you just left me alone with Maverick in the same room. I did? Yeah, I was worried there for a second. Don't you worry about him. You mentioned that you had a talk with him about a week ago and that didn't end badly for you either. He might be scary, but I don't think you need to be afraid of him. He's got a very strong sense of justice, so he wouldn't do anything to you without a good reason. The question is whether you or I would find those reasons good too. Seriously, don't worry about him. Don't base your opinion of him solely on that incident on the portal. Do you really think he was wrong to suspect Reza? When Reza went on to do the things he'd done? When we talked with Emera, she pointed out that incident could have caused this whole mess. No matter his reasons, do you really think that you want to defend Reza's action like that? I don't know. This sucks for everyone involved, so let's just focus on getting things done when the, on the job and not let it consume us elsewhere. Mm, maybe you're right. What's that outside? Fireworks? Um, yes, must be the f summer festival. You wanted to get out of your apartment and rather go to the festival? You came here? The, f the festival isn't really anything special for me anymore. Seen one, seen them all. Besides, it's usually more of a thing for families, really. I see. Are those the fireworks people keep talking about? No, they have a fireworks show every evening. Nobody really cares about the first couple of days. It's only the last day when they bring out the big ones. I usually watch those. Oh, so if there's big explosions, then you care? Well, yeah. It's a big tradition here, maybe even an ideological one. You know, everyone in the whole time united under the stars watching the beautiful fireworks. It's a thing. People have been telling me for the last few days how I just have to see them. You know, you kind of owe it to us as an ambassador to take part in a cultural event like that. I'm going to go anyway, so you don't need to convince me. You wanna come with me? I know all the good viewing spots. Most of the popular ones are usually super crowded, and we probably want to avoid those. Wink. I can't really promise anything right now, but I'll keep it in mind. Well, you've got my number, so let me know as soon as you can. Sure thing. You know, those fireworks are also often a couple thing. Well, I'm not sure. surprised. They can set the mood for a romantic evening. Well, they're still going on outside right now. Are you saying you want to go outside and watch? No, I'm saying we could take this conversation elsewhere. Namely, the bedroom. The bedroom is here is nothing special, I can assure you of that. Well, it's better than the one I have right now. You know, when you slept over last time and we shared the couch, I took it as a sign. Did that mean anything to you, or was that just two friends sharing a couch that was clearly too small for two people who just wanted to stay friends? Uh, okay, this is getting weird and creepy, but... Uh, I didn't mean what you thought it meant, it meant exactly what you thought it meant. I didn't mean anything, but we can still make this a romantic evening. Uh, I don't know. Oh, crap. Okay. This is... I'm, I'm very uncomfortable with this. But... Uh, wait, what was the question? I'm starting to think that maybe I shouldn't play dating simulators. I'm bad at them. Mainly because I'm very uncomfortable with romance in games in general. Um, let's go with the bottom one. Oh, really? I didn't know you were interested. Guess you know now. So, what do you want to do? Well, why don't we make this a little more romantic? Share a glass of wine and see where the evening takes us. I should have another bottle in the kitchen. I'll go fetch it. Sure thing. I went into the kitchen to fetch a bottle of wine and two appropriate vessels, wondering how Bryce would manage a wine glass. When I returned from the kitchen, however, I was met with an unexpected sight. Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay, hello. Well, uh... 
Scream, reject, accept. Oh god. Oh god. Oh no. Scream and the uh, I I can't do this. I'm just no. Oh wait. Uh she, shit. I think screaming might be slightly impolite, wouldn't it? Also, aren't you like naked all the time anyway? Let's see what happens if I scream. Shocked at the display before me, I let out an involuntary scream. Immediately, Bryce sprang to his feet at somewhat embarrassed look on his face. Oh, what is it? Is that what a romantic evening is for you? Hey, I already had one earlier, so I figured I'd speed up the process. You know what? Just get out. Hey, I'm sorry, I didn't want to... Yeah, whatever, just go. Aww. Alright, I'm going. Okay. Yeah, I'm bad at dating sims. I shouldn't play these. I really shouldn't play these. Conflict, chapter 5. Okay, and I'm going to end this episode right here. That was very uncomfortable. So, so very uncomfortable. I, yeah, I'm, I'm out of words here. I, I should not play these things. <gasps> anyway. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of Angels with Scaly Wings. I, if you liked it, let me know. And if you have any ideas how to proceed with this game from now on, I'm all ears. Because I, I know the choices I should be making, but for some reason I feel kind of uncomfortable with making those decisions. So, yeah, if you want to see some human on dragon action, do let me know that down in the comments and I will deliver. Otherwise, I don't know what this uh, is going to be from now on. But anyway, yes. Thank you for watching this. I hope you're having a great day and I will see you again next time.